Let us talk fake meat now. Beyond Meat out with its numbers as well. And this was a stinker, I think it's safe to say, for Beyond Meat. A stinker on top of what has already been a tough year for the company, with its already having cut its forecast. Now it's coming out with a fourth quarter forecast that is below, pretty well below what analysts have been looking for. The top end of its revenue forecast for the fourth quarter, $110 million. Analysts had been estimating on average $131.5 million dollars. Um, and the company's numbers last quarter are also not looking great here. So what's going on? You see that the loss wider than estimated. Saz, you cover this uh, company closely. What's going on at Beyond Meat? Uh, I think it's a combination of the pandemic and growing pains. I mean, the company's putting a lot of capital and expenses and man hours to work to, to reach its vision of just being this global protein provider. They're, they're building out a lot of capacity uh, to also support uh, their sandwiches that are now starting to hit the market uh, around the world with McDonald's, but not a good quarter. I mean, there's no other way to say it here. And now you're really seeing the street come out here and revolt uh, against uh, Beyond Meat. They were giving Beyond Meat somewhat a, a benefit of a doubt after their challenging second quarter, but no longer. I just got a note a couple seconds ago from Jeffrey's Rob Dickerson, who covers this space, saying, quote, this was the quarter that likely broke the camel's back. Uh, also saying uh, it's just that simple. They had cut their revenue forecast by 30 percent over the next two years. Price target now $90 uh, over at Jeffrey's on Beyond Meat. Not a good quarter. The stock's going to stay in the penalty box here. And then the other mover that we're watching this morning is Open Door. Um, this company coming out with a smaller loss than estimated, coming out with revenue that beat estimates and a forecast ahead of estimates. And to me, Open Door is also so interesting in sharp contrast with what happened at Zillow, with that company exiting the house flipping business and the Wall Street Journal this morning reporting that Zillow reached its deal to sell about 2,000 homes from that business to a, a private New York-based investment firm. Open Door obviously has figured out, uh, Emily, what Zillow did not manage to. Uh, that's right, Julie. And I think a lot of this comes down to the algorithms here. Now, Al Open Door and Zillow, of course, but Open Door doing so successfully, uh, managing to actually price its homes that it's selling at a higher price than it actually purchased them for. So that is one of the big reasons we did see the success here in this quarter relative to what we saw with Zillow. But just taking a look here now, of course, Open Door did book a $32 million housing inventory impairment in this quarter. Uh, but putting that in the context of what the company had actually seen um, and what the company actually owns here. It does have a $6.3 billion real estate portfolio. So a pretty modest impairment compared to that. And also a modest impairment compared to the about $570 million that Zillow is going to be writing down as it exits its home flipping business. So I think as we see the reaction in the stock price with Open Door to these results here, um, yes, it was better than expected on the top line, but also really investors breathing a sigh of relief that this company is faring better than Zillow had just recently.